Hello and welcome students, class, subscribers, clients, kingdom citizens. How you all doing today? In this video, we're going to be looking at a case study. We're going to be going through velocity banking, chunking, showing you the numbers, all of that. But I'm going to be explaining things from the perspective of financial coaching, right? So this video is going to be very, very valuable for those who are aspiring to become financial coaches without certifications. You're looking to implement velocity banking in your practice. Maybe you're an insurance agent. Maybe you are already a financial coach and you want to add velocity banking to your arsenal with your clients and you want to present this strategy. You feel like it can benefit a lot of people wherever you're at in your journey. It's going to be very valuable for those who are providing the service, those who uh, plan to add velocity banking to your practice. I'm going to be talking from that perspective the questions that I'm asking the, the client specifically, meeting them where they're at. You know, the interesting thing about velocity banking, it's still a very foreign concept, right? There's a lot of negativity around it. There's a lot of skepticism around it still. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of good news here. You know, over the last four years that I've been creating content, I've been able to help thousands of people across the United States implement velocity banking achieve success we have documented results we have documented videos case studies after case studies after case studies ranging incomes as low as low five figures to six figures to multiple six figures to seven figures right case studies all 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 around the average american income salary right husband and wife household family two incomes solo income entrepreneur plus w2 job you name it the materials out there. So for those that are looking to copy or enhance, do better than what I already have out there, as well as other velocity banking influencers and, and experts and practitioners out there. If you're looking to be that next person, you're looking to step out, and create content for yourself. This is the type of video I think you're going to find a lot of value in definitely addressing with your clients so that they can also achieve success with velocity banking the reality is financial coaching in the 21st century is shifting right from the last four years that i've been a financial coach consultant strategist my main thing has always been focusing on cash flow over net worth a lot of the financial coaching that i've seen witness from other gurus in our space focuses very heavily on debt elimination first and then investing for accumulation, investing for net worth to generate a stream of income at a later point in time. Whereas finances in the 21st century today with inflation, taxation, I mean, everything increasing in our marketplace with businesses going out, big corporations merging, um, people losing jobs over pandemic, people being laid off just a very volatile economic environment that we live in today, coaching must shift. It can't stay the same. And what I've noticed in the in industry of financial coaching is it needs an upgrade. It honestly needs an upgrade. It's not that the principles and foundations of financial coaching are wrong. That's not what I'm saying. It is absolutely true of the foundations and principles. The issue is we can't stay there. At some point, we have to really analyze numbers. We have to think big. We have to think very strategic in solving for financial freedom, in solving for cash flow, in solving for purpose. We, we've got to think outside the box as financial coaches. We, we can't keep saying things like all personal finance can be summarized on an index card. That's that's a half truth, right? I'm pretty sure a business plan, a business strategy, a financial strategy to start a company, right? To take it public, right? To invest in an opportunity in a new marketplace or in, in real estate. No, you're not fitting that in index card. More like hundreds and hundreds of pages of notes, multiple books, right? Multiple hours of reading and watching, you know, content, audio books, seminars, workshops no you can't fit that all on an index card my friend okay we got to stop saying that as financial coaches the second thing we have to stop 
really just like hammering in on as a financial uh, uh, from the perspective of coaching from what i've seen personally where we say if it's too complicated right or if it sounds too good then it probably is man that is it that is an archaic old low thinking right small thinking mindset self-limiting belief mindset right just just it's a very very poor mindset if you're the financial coach and your client comes to you and asks hey what's infinite banking hey what what's velocity banking hey i watched this video on forex or on crypto i'm interested in doing this strategy called dot 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 if you're a financial coach and you never heard of that strategy and your solution is to basically bring that client down by hitting them with questions that are almost call it demonizing or you know making the client feel dumb where they're like no you tell me what is infinite banking or oh yeah that's a scam like whoa 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 as a financial coach it is your job in my opinion it's your job to go to war with your client to go to battle right to be the flag carrier to hype your client up to inspire them motivate them educate them learn with them so they present they come to you with a strategy don't don't knock it down rather say how much research have you done so far what articles videos books have you read so far that maybe i could go read myself and maybe we can have a dialogue conversation over this as your financial coach i think it's important for me to get on the same page where you're at with this strategy i want to know how confident are you with are you 10 percent? are you 50 are you 100 right so those are some of the things that we're going to address in this case study today so without any further ado let's dive right into it so on the board here we have a client mom single mom making eleven thousand eight hundred a month net income base right this is this person this client is a nurse so they have the ability to make more money than the 11 8 per month through um, overtime you know working more hours taking on more shifts so they just gave me the base when you're gathering numbers for velocity banking it's very important to notify your client let them know in advance give me the underestimated numbers conservative numbers for your income set that standard it's going to be very helpful for you when you're mapping out the whole velocity banking strategy because the reality is when you when you start mapping out velocity banking it can be very difficult when you don't really know this person's overall life or you're just looking at numbers based on what they gave you they could be inaccurate they could be lying or they could just be leaving information out that they didn't even think of right so it's nice to leave room for error the way i leave room for error as first tip in your notes as a financial coach leave room for error when gathering numbers put that down in your notes leave room for error when gathering the four major numbers right so with a person's net monthly income get the conservative number 11,800 so that's what we're dealing with when it comes to expenses have them overestimate on expenses have them be very accurate but then create a little buffer just a little bit nothing crazy not a thousand bucks but realistically based on when you look at their finances what they spend money on see what little buffer you can add you know 100 200 bucks nothing crazy so we have an overestimated expense cost per month this is everything saving investing tithing giving bills debt payments everything as a velocity banking coach practitioner it's important for you to get all of the numbers all of them don't let them leave anything out so expenses are ten thousand nine seventeen sixty nine. total debt is four hundred and fifty one thousand one sixty seven twelve cents cash flow eight hundred and eighty two dollars and thirty one cents okay that's imperative you get these numbers down before you even jump on a call with them you want to get as accurate as humanly possible with these numbers so that you as a financial coach can maximize your time with the client focusing on the numbers the results we can deal with traumas we can deal with emotional traumas and what what was your first interaction with money as a as a as a child or you know what did mom dad say about money you don't you don't need to get all that information right away when you're when you're in the beginning working with a client get the numbers 
because that will reveal more information than what they will tell you in, in 15 minutes that they'll waste giving you their life story. So be focused on getting these numbers. And what's beautiful is even if they don't become a long-term coaching client, just by you having the numbers, you can check in on them because you mapped out a strategy. So let's say they paid you for just one session, one coaching call. And in that one coaching call, you wrote out a six month or maybe eight month, nine month velocity banking plan. And then call is over. Okay. You have your notes. Make sure you, as the coach, you document those notes somewhere, whether it's in an email folder, CRM, whatever you're using, make sure you document those notes. Even if it's written on a, on a book date, the first name, last name, um, the date that you had that call with them. And if they just booked that one call, look three months out, two months out, you can check in on them. Hey, just checking in. How's your progress going? According to my numbers, according to our last phone call, you should be at this debt number. You should have this much cash flow by now. Oh no, you're not there. Got it. Let's jump on a call. Boom. Send them the link. They'll, they'll more than likely enroll or sign up for that next coaching call. And they might even hook up with you on some longer term coaching as you take them through your sales process, your sales and marketing process to, you know, close them as a long term client. And that's where your skills come in, in terms of your communication to deliver what it is that you can do for them. You say, Hey, listen, in that one phone call, I mapped out a strategy that increased your cash flow of $750. We lowered the debt by 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, whatever it is. What else do you need to know about me to make an investment in yourself? so that we can work together. What else, what, what else do you need to know, right, about me, right? What information do you need to make that decision? Oh, you know, da, 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 whatever they say, okay, got it. So if I provided those things for you, you would go ahead and sign up for coaching, my coaching package? Yes, okay, got it, I'll get that information over to you. Boom, right, then you go from there. So moving right along, after you get the four major numbers, obviously we need a debt tool if we're doing velocity banking. So here we have a personal line of credit. It's really helpful when the client already obtains the debt tool. If not, then paying attention to the velocity banking pregame work is critical. And as a velocity banking practitioner, or a new financial coach, leverage me, right? Send them the content that I already made, right? Leverage me or leverage someone else. Say, hey, I need you to watch these videos. It's gonna, it's really gonna prep you, get you prepared for velocity banking in the meantime we'll work on doing some snowball right uh, get our credit up whatever it is to get to that next step so whether you plan on creating content or if you don't plan on creating content then leverage someone so leverage me leverage a mike adams or uh connor j wallace there's not many very many of us right there's not a whole lot of content out there so i i'm excited for those who are creating content that are in my coaching program that's building up other coaches i'm excited for you guys to create content, do it better than I can, right? If you really pay attention to myself, you're, you're going to notice a lot of gaps, a lot of opportunities, a lot of markets for you to penetrate and just dominate in that area. So I'm excited. Anyways, this client, four major numbers. We have a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for 20 grand and 9%. That's the uh, interest rate. No balance on it yet, right? They haven't started, which is perfect. It's nice when they have their numbers, they have the debt tool ready to go, they've moved all their banking over, they set up the bill pay, they got everything going, and then we we go and map out the whole strategy, right? So I just laid out a couple of important debts here. The the main theme is that they got two cars, a credit card, we got one mortgage, that's the value of the mortgage, and total student loan debt is 233,000, but it's spread out over like maybe 10 different types of loans, and totaling, 2598.85 in payments, right? Now, here's the thing. That 2598.85 is currently not being paid. So student loans are all of their student loans are on deferment, not accumulating interest, no payments required, right? Another thing as financial coaches, look, we got to get out of this this mindset of eliminate debt first, you know, go in order, like really look at the person's situation, look at all the numbers, look at the opportunities, right? Is this debt hurting them? Is this debt holding them back from achieving another opportunity here? What is the opportunity cost of them 
allocating money towards a debt that's not charging them any interest, right? You know, I, I've seen a lot of material of people, you know, talking about pay your student loans now, even though they're not charging any interest, you're going to pay it off faster. Again, yes, that is true. But if I'm getting smacked over the head with all these other credit card debts, right? And these other debts that are charging me interest, even though in the debt snowball where it goes from lowest to highest, even though the student loans are the say the lowest debts, but this debt over here is you're getting smacked at 15.99% interest and the cash flow recovery is 350 bucks a month. Focus on the cash flow. Another note take for you financial coaches that are becoming financial coaches without certifications and you're adding velocity banking to the mix. Focus and solve for cash flow in the 21st century. That is the number one thing you need today is cash flow or access to capital. One or the other, in my opinion, cash flow first, access to capital second. That's the way I like to do it. If I have cash flow, cash flowing in, it doesn't matter how much debt I have as long as I have plenty of cash flow to service the debt and save and invest and multiply, right? And be fruitful. Okay. So solve for cash flow in the 21st century, cash flow over net worth, cash flow over accumulation, right? So these are the main debts that we're working with. Now, I'm not going to go into explaining how I figure out my chunk and all this stuff, because again, that's not that I'm not explaining or breaking down this case study from the perspective of my clients who are learning velocity banking rather i'm talking to those who already know it you've been getting tons of results yourself and you plan on being a financial coach so the first chunk solving for cash flow working with the client here on the board looking at what their goals are what they want meeting them where they're at so this mom particularly wants to pay off debt extremely fast she wants to increase her cash flow because come january we don't know if student loans are going to kick back in so we just want to be prepared for that we want to try and increase cash flow as much as possible before those student loans um, kick in and they may not kick in so we're going to strategize for that if the student loans kick in here's what we do if they don't kick in here's what we do right and then you work through the client you have conversation have dialogue does this make sense are you comfortable yes no okay cool bam we pivot so in this case we're making a initial chunk first chunk out of the p-lock of eleven thousand five eighty one seventeen right here for a cash flow recovery 232 dollars and we're going to move 11.95 percent to nine percent and then through velocity banking nine percent will become less than four right to be very very attractive in addition oftentimes i don't know where this came from Okay, I'm a young guy, 26 years old, but most of my clients, my newest clients, right at the beginning, when I first initially work with them, when I'm getting to know what their current financial philosophies are, one consistent thing that I've seen across the board, all different cultures, is whenever you're dealing with a 0% credit card, so you let's say you've got a client, they have a 0% credit card, 0% interest promo period 12 months 15 months however long it is and they run five grand seven grand whatever it is i've seen this all the time they'll take that balance that they ran up and they divide it by the amount of months that they're on the zero interest and that's how they pay it off again when you're working from the perspective of velocity banking cash flow is super important when cash flow is together, third note take right here, cash flow together is stronger, right? Than when separated. Okay. So cash flow is stronger together than when separated. That is a prime example of you separating your cash flow to an area that's not charging you any interest. So just pay the monthly minimum payment and redirect that cash flow difference to this debt over here that's going to increase your cash flow by $400 so that by the time that card expires, we've got all this cash flow and, and capital over here to wipe out that debt right before it expires, pay nothing in interest. Both are tr correct. Both get the job done. 
It's just a matter of which is more efficient. And velocity banking is always about solving for maximum efficiency with every single dollar, right? So in addition to paying off that credit card, they're also redirecting $223.47 that they were allocating to a credit card that the monthly minimum payment was only like 30 something bucks. So we're gonna keep paying that monthly minimum payment up until the card expires. Then we'll pay it off in full from the line of credit, pay nothing in interest on the credit card. Whatever we pay in interest on the line gets offset from the previous offsets that you're doing already. Okay, so 232, 22347. In addition, we're looking at right now as I record this video, I'm in November 2022. So at the top of the month for this client, as they start velocity banking, they're making a first chunk of 11,581.17, but then they're gonna make another small micro chunk about maybe five days later from this initial chunk to pay off another credit card. $3,016.73 for a $79.05 cash flow gain, 26.99 rerouted to 9%. Again, nine becomes less than four, probably even less than that. Probably they're probably around two in, in reality, right? So now velocity banking begins, right? The 11, the three total were like 14, five and some change. Income for November goes in. Expenses went from 10,917.69 all the way down to 7,784.32. That's the 232 gain, the 223.47, 79.05, and the 2,598.85. This is the amount of money that they're not paying towards their student loans because it's not charging them any interest. No payments are required. So we're going to redirect that money to hit these debts over here and pay back the line of credit extremely fast to make another chunk, right? And keep going down the line. So as we look at velocity banking, end of November, we're gonna be somewhere around 10,582.22. Now, here's the other cool part. When you're mapping out velocity banking, it's important to also show the, the cost of borrowing, right? Each and every month. That can be very timely in a, in a conversation with a, con a client. So a good way to account for borrowing costs, again, is back here, four major numbers. Underestimating income, overestimating expenses, underestimating cash flow creates all that buffer. What you illustrate ends up being worse than what they'll actually do. They come back to you, Denzel, I'm doing even much better. You're, you're creating this momentum psychologically for the client. They're like, oh, I just beat my coach's numbers. That gets them excited, guys. So it, it there, there's no manipulation in that because you were solving for conservative results. The reality is they should do better because you underestimated, you accounted room for error. Again, I'm not even accounting any of the bonus money that this person gets, potential raises, right? And additional work hours. All of that will help in terms of when I don't illustrate my borrowing costs. In this scenario here, I didn't illustrate borrowing costs, right? And when you're on a phone call, you may not have the time to do that. Maybe do it for the first month or two, but then just, again, always say conservative, conservative, conservative. Here's what we should look like, right? And if you're gonna illustrate aggressive, then you wanna be very, very accurate with that. So end of November, there's somewhere around 10,582.22 and some change. End of December, we're down to 6,566.54, right? Income in, expenses out, income in, expenses out. So by January, by the end of January or February is when they can make the next chunk. Again, when you're looking at, as a coach, when you're looking to solve for cash flow, when you're doing velocity banking, because that's the key, solve for cash flow every single time. When I was looking at the client here, their, their numbers, they were like, Denzel, should I, you know, if student loans kick in come January, 2023, should I go ahead and wipe out some of them? Now, from the debt snowball perspective, the answer would be yes, because they're within this 233K of student loan debt. There's about three or four student loans that are five grand, seven grand, seven grand, you know, 10 grand, nine grand, right? So from that perspective, yeah, it would make sense. Those are the next smallest debts 
and the interest rates are like six percent seven percent so it's high it's um amortized which means at nine percent right by moving six seven amortized to nine percent knowing that nine is really less than three less than four percent there's a saving so you you articulate that to the client yes it would make sense but i'm always looking for I'm always solving for cash flow first. So when I look at the client's debts, right, you have them all laid out, get the balance owed monthly minimum required payment interest rate. And I solve for, I look at cash flow first, interest saving second, balance third, right? That's usually the order that I go in, but also I'm looking at all three simultaneously. In the debt snowball world, they disregard monthly minimum required payment. They disregard interest rate. They're just looking at lowest balance to highest balance. And here's the other half truth that I've seen in the marketplace as financial coaches. Um, from This is me, personal opinion here, right? I may be wrong. I'm okay with being wrong. But there's this analogy that for your clients, it's a behavioral thing when it comes to eliminating debt. I've been coaching now for four years. Again, I'm young. I don't know much. Okay, I'm not the expert here. Based on my experience working with thousands of people, I didn't have to get this person's life story. I don't have to know their trauma. I don't have to know what they've been through. I need to know where they're going. I need to know how clear they are about where they're going. And then I simply match a financial strategy, mathematics, that literally GPS, bomb, right for where they want to go. I don't need to know that they lost their mom, they lost their dad, they lost a, a kid, or although that information is powerful information to build a strong relationship with your clients, no doubt about that. That will take you the distance, in my opinion, for long-term relations, lifelong clients, that'll take you the distance when a, when a client feels comfortable enough to share that type of information, but I don't need it initially. You just need the numbers, guys get the numbers, show them the strategy, and then encourage them that they can accomplish this. This is just numbers. This is sixth grade math. Okay. So me personally, I don't like it when financial coaches that have authority, influence, impact. So you technically are standing at a, at a higher level or, or better posture as it would seem to your clients. The client is surrendering to what you know and how you posture yourself so if you tell the client it's in here it's in the head it's behavior again there's truth in it i get that but i don't like when the client is told don't look at the monthly payment don't look at the interest just just put your debts in order right smallest to highest and attack the first one guys mathematically most of the time that is completely incorrect completely incorrect so if you want to be a financial coach of the 21st century you want to add velocity banking to the mix infinite banking right cash flow strategies right where you're literally hacking people's finances you're you're putting codes right it's like a game and you're really showing the client how they can become a master and they don't have to you know sublease their authority to somebody else they don't have to delegate their financial strategy to you, the coach or the advisor. Rather, you wanna empower them. So the financial coach of the 21st century today is empowering their clients, right? That's what you wanna be doing. You wanna empower them and say, no, 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 no. You're how old, 55 year old single mom? You've never ran a company before? I beg to differ. How many kids you got, four? Listen, mom, by now, you should probably be CEO of a company because you've raised four individuals You've managed them. You've kept them alive. You fed them three meals a day. Trust me when I tell you, mom, you've got more time management skills than your average CEO out there in the marketplace today. Empower them, right? Go right to the core. Shut down that whole self-limiting belief that they have and let them know, whoa, 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 what did you say? Single mom, divorced mom, widowed mom. You said that you're not smart enough, that you don't know math. You Wait a second, wait a second. You mean to tell me that when you were a single mom at 25 years old making $10 an hour and you had two kids to fend for and you was on WIC, welfare, child support, making $10 an hour, working two shifts, two different jobs, you somehow manage to take the bus, take the train, take the taxi, take the Uber, take the Lyft to then 
work your shift to then leave at a certain time to have just enough time to eat to then pick the kids up from aftercare to then take them home to then go to your next shift to drop them off at the babysitter you're not good at math mom excuse me have you not been managing your time for the last 25 years now you're 45 years old the kids are grown nobody's in prison nobody's locked up they're all in college they've got degrees this one married this one has a kid now do you not see your kingdom do you not see your fruit mom boom empower right so when you when you talk like that my goodness the, the client feels that and you want to reassure them in the numbers it's just numbers mom that's it it's just numbers you got this right so recap four major numbers underestimate overestimate underestimate get all the debts line them up the debt tool first chunk boom income goes in expenses out we're now in january end of january our chunk amount is going to be around 16.7 again attacking cash flow what is that the car 358 17 146 was the initial balance by the time you've made the payment for november december january balance maybe somewhere around 16 i way overestimated that might be a little bit less so 16 7 is the chunk and come in expenses out right you're around 19,250.86. balance goes back up near maxed out on the line of credit does that make sense we can justify it with the cash flow that they've accumulated from the 232, the 223, the, 7, the 7905, and now the 35871. Add all that up. That is, I'm comfortable as the coach, as the client, reassure them. If they're not, they don't have to. We could wait, right? Many of, the, many of the times, we don't have to wait to hit zero on the line of credit to make our next chunk. That's an example. Here is what happened. End of January, the balance of the line of credit is not fully paid off. By February, it would have been. For maximizing efficiency and really creating a lot of momentum, that car could be done January, moved into the line. And then by the end of February, we're around uh, 17,475.32, right? So end of January, cash flow gain 358.71, cash flow loss. So I actually factored in student loan payments kicking in January. So cash flow loss. 2,598.85, right? So cash flow goes down by that amount. This is what I'm factoring in. February, income goes in. Expenses go up from the 7,784.32. We're back up to 10,24.46. Again, I didn't factor in all that extra time, hours that they've been working. So that is what gives me the confidence for them to say, yeah, we can go ahead and really kind of almost nearly breach that line of credit to recover all that cash flow very quickly early on right uh so in february another thing that uh, will occur let me see if i got my notes correctly here so i don't throw myself off there was another credit card right so before i get them ahead of myself end of january we're at 19 86 right so that means now in february income goes in expenses go out we're at 17,475.32 plus $264.79 micro chunk to pay off another credit card that was on zero percent interest right for a cash flow gain of $30 so that pays off another little credit card that sits in their line of credit that $30 boom cash flow gain end of February March income in expenses are now from the 1024 now we're at 9994.46 balance 15934.57 end of march another thing that happens remember that redirection i mentioned earlier 22347 that credit card that was on 0% and they had divided it right and so that's why they were paying like 260 something 250 or whatever the case was Here's the remaining balance when they went to just paying the monthly minimum required payment, which is $32.69. So by March, credit card expires, $1,675.48, right? Cash flow gain, $32. Income in, expenses out for April, right? So the balance goes up in March, right? Which is why you'll see how the, the number kind of looks the same because that's about what they have in cash flow. So the number doesn't change as much. But expense goes down 9,961.77, right? So income in, expenses out for the month of April. Ending balance in April, 15,771.82. Not bad. 
cash flow, we're now at 1838.23. Okay. Come May, balance is at 13,933.59. And then to be quick, because I'm running out of space on my board, I looked all the way out to October by October. Worst case scenario, we're anywhere between zero and forty seven hundred dollars owed on the line of credit, which means our next chunk is gonna be somewhere around eighteen grand to hit that next car. Again, ignoring the student loans, being the lower balances, right? And the higher interest rates, that cash flow for the amount of money that I would need to chunk to get rid of student loans, I would not even come close to the cash flow game. So again, I'm ignoring that, hitting the cars, right? And the best part is if student loans get extended, this accelerates my numbers tremendously, right? They'll have the car paid off way, both cars, everything be way higher. Like we're talking mid 2023 summer 2023 right rather than looking in october around chunking that vehicle so with this strategy here's the other thing that you can do with your client and this, this gets them super excited right super excited is what you want to do is once you've mapped out i like in a one hour phone call i typically like to map out about six to nine months of a, of a strategy that's very very critique very numbers mathematics everything showing them what to do day in day out i can usually get that done in about an hour just one phone call right so what they paid me they get back i literally show them okay you just paid me 250 bucks an hour 275 an hour whatever my hourly rate is whatever your hourly rate is 300 400 out whatever you're charging when you show them after they made that investment for that one hour with you and you literally show them how much cash flow recovery they'll have just from this one phone call the next six to nine months best believe they're coming back best belief there's a match bang right and then it's just a nurturing process following up with them staying in touch with them checking in on them hey how's the family how's everything doing how are you how are the numbers panning out right when all of that it, it, um man it gets exciting just being able to you know see the the light bulb go off see the person's eyes glow right whether you're on a zoom call with them you just see them like oh my god you know and then before they're before you know it they're in tears because they actually see the light at the end of the tunnel that's what most of my mom say i see the light at the end of the tunnel this is exciting right i see what god's doing in my life if they're faith believer i see the blessings i see the authority i see it i see it right they see the vision they see the mission of who they are stepping into the next chapter of their life as a woman in authority my goodness my goodness again empower them hype them up you don't have to be fake about it, it because you you've you've got the strategy you've laid it out so you don't you don't got to go all mindset on them numbers right then mindset then passions like i want results right i want wins let's go let's have some fun with this right get them excited so now to get them even more excited what you could do is you add up all of the chunks that was made in the timeline maybe go one year i like to do one year for this reason you add up all of the chunks that occurred in one year and then also add up all of the payments on all of the other debts because they're still making their monthly minimum payments right add all that up in this scenario conservatively it came out to a hundred and three thousand dollars of debt of money that they would have sent to debt 103 plus thousand obviously some of that is interest right so we can very conservatively say okay 451,161 16712 divided by the total amount of debt right that we eliminated in one year say over 100 grand well then i can say well you'll be debt free in about four and a half years 4.3 years so our number was 4.3 years or less will be debt free when this client in particular heard that i heard i heard the tears i heard them she was you know holding it back but by the end of the phone call she was in tears right for this for this client but tears of joy tears of excitement like wow i have the plan it's right there right and then you the coach whether you provide it to them in video format like i'm doing here or a word doc or a quick uh, you know zoom video with the whiteboard whatever it is you you want them to document the strategy as you're 
telling it to them. It's another pro tip. Right? Just don't hack out a bunch of numbers over the phone, especially if you're not doing Zoom, especially if there's no you know live feature to it where they can see a visual of their numbers. If you're just doing the phone call, right? Make sure pen and paper, they have their notes. Make sure they're writing the same numbers down that you're writing as you're writing it. This way you're just, they're just hearing everything you're saying. They're writing it down, writing it down. And then when they're, they look at the paper and they're like, oh my God, Denzel, yeah. I can see that 100 plus thousand getting paid off in 12 months or less. So that's in 4.3 years will be completely debt free. Gotcha. That gets them really excited conservatively. So you, you give them that number. And then if you just want to slam dunk it, you know what I mean? Like, ah, God, like, or, you know, shoot the three, whatever it is, throw the touchdown. If, if you want to do this next step is you, you solve for financial freedom. Now, solving for financial freedom is very interesting, right? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, but I want to give you a couple more seconds here on the board just to kind of look at everything, see how I lay everything out in the different segments. You'll notice three major segments, right? Four major numbers, debt, line of credit, strategy. It's typically how I'll even illustrate it to them when they're writing in their notes. Like, look, top left corner, four major numbers. Below that, debt tool, debts, then to the right, show the strategy. So now I'm sharing my screen just showing you me playing with numbers, and this is just fun fun little thing I do with my clients where, you know, I ask some questions, you know, how big do you want to grow, right? How much impact do you want to make in this world before you exit? Big questions, right? And then I just throw a number out there. I say, what if we 10 X your income in the next seven years or less? What would that do for your life? What if, what would it take, right? What, what disciplines, what attitudes, what, what kind of person do I need to become to 10 X my income? Is that possible? Right? So I just run the numbers. Okay. What's 11,800 a month, right? times 10, it's 118. So going from making 11,800 a month to 118,000 a month times 12, 1.46, 1.4 million per year. Can I do that in, in seven years or less? I can tell you how to not do it by growing your money. That's how you not do it. And here's the proof. Look, I showed, I looked it up on Google, the average increase for the average salary in America is 4.8%. W-2 employees. That's how much money we, that's how much we increase our income every year by 4.8%. Inflation is 9.1% last time I checked by Google, but that number is really 20% is really what inflation is at right now. But you can't say that because, you know, you can't say that. So they just say 9.1 for now. Okay, big deal. So I took the 4.8, the 9.1, and then I did a cost of living adjustment of 4%. That's 17.9%. If you increased your income by 17.9% every year for the next seven years, the total amount of revenue that you would make is $1.7 million. So you doubled your income by two and a half times, right? But that's not even really accurate, right? Because then, you know, taxes and all that good stuff. So at 17.9%, so at which is however many times, almost three, four times the average American income salary that increases their wage year to year, you're, you're four X that it's still not enough to get to the, the 1.4 million annually, right? Per year, not total per year, 1.4 million. So here's what I like to do with my client is when I'm showing them these kinds of numbers, I'm like, Hey, even if I failed miserably and got halfway there, I don't think you'd be upset, right? Even if I just, if I just doubled, right? One year to the next, just doubled. Walking in your purpose, achieving your gifts. And I just let them, I let them sit with it. And I just remind them cash flow over accumulation is always faster and more efficient, short term and long term. Put that in your notes as a financial coach. Cash flow over accumulation, cash flow over net worth is always going to be faster and more efficient. When I say more efficient tax wise, it's more efficient because you're making that money through a business. So I could have less cash flow than what you have in net worth, but I still have more money than you because of how much you'll get taxed and hit through inflation over the years, hoping and praying for growth. So as financial coaches, I think we need to shift the conversation from growing your money to multiplying the money. Very, very key. We need to multiply the money. So when you solve for cash flow, you allow that client to think multiplication, multiplication, 
if we take it biblically, Genesis 1, 26 through 28 gives the exact strategy on how to multiply the fruit. Be fruitful. That means to work, to produce, right? And then from there, we're multiplying, replenishing, you then dominate. Dominion. It's your strategy right there, your whole mandate. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. I'll look at my notes real quick to see if I didn't mess that up biblically. Because I know I, I do that. My memory is not the best. My girlfriend tells me that all the time. So I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? So I'll I'll look for that and I'll put it in the comments because I don't want to waste any more of your time here. So it's, ah, I had it right. It's be fruitful, right? Genesis 1, 26 through 28. It's the original mandate of God is a business, right? To have dominion, which means to dominate the marketplace in your area of gifting. Literally, be fruitful, work, produce. Whatever you're working on in with your gift, multiply it. Multiply the fruit much faster than growth. Then replenish, 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 sow more seed. Then you subdue the marketplace. You, you overload it. You market, right? You provide value. You keep providing an insane, abundant overflow, right? Of value. You're subdued. That produces dominion. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be in this world? Tell that to your clients. Be okay when your client knows more than you, when they make more money than you, when they think bigger than you. Be okay with that. I have seen this personally when I talk to some other coaches, right? When I've worked with people before, it kind of pick their brain a little bit, kind of see where their philosophy is at. I'm like, man, you're so, you're so limiting in your coaching practice. It's so limiting. Like you're telling me to think small, be safe, right? I got no problem with being cautious and aware of the dangers, but is there a way to mitigate all risk to damn near zero by simply being a master over an area of gifting that I have and then have the backing of the almighty father plus logic? Look, the numeros. How can I possibly go wrong? If this is your area of gifting, how can you go wrong? Let the client know that, hey, go for it. Man, I work with so many disabled clients. I have clients that I work with, disabled, neck down, waist down, okay? Had a, had a conversation with a client recently. He, I believe he's paralyzed, neck down, and has operating in, I, in one arm you can only operate one arm so he's got one limb other one done legs done no access one limb that one arm is not the arm he writes with right so talk about being against the wall limited in terms of what you can produce but this guy has a spirit of growth and expansion and multiplication i fed into that you know fed into it other clients that are disabled, disabled veterans, I'm like, what'd you go through? Okay, got it. You lost this, 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 and this. That's That story right there is a multi-million dollar story. It's got nothing to do with the money. It's what access you can gain and impact and influence by simply having the tool at your disposal. Are you going to go to a construction site without a hard hat? without the vest, the boots, the gloves, and tools? Or are you gonna show up in a bathing suit to a construction site? So we as financial coaches, we, we don't wanna be, you know, like limiting the amount of tools, access to new information, just because you're anti-debt or you're anti-credit cards or you're anti-whole life insurance right? And you're anti that and you're anti this. So what? Your client isn't. Your client is curious. Your client wants to know more. Your client read five books on infinite banking and 25 videos. They're more educated than you are. Your client read more, watched more content on velocity banking, on debt leveraging, on credit maximization, on capital and liquidity and investing in Forex and crypto and stock market and 
options trading and blah, 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 blah. They're reading it more than you are. So you as a financial coach, you need to up your game and get on the same page with your clients because clients of the 21st century today, they need that person they can bounce ideas off of and mastermind with. So if you're a struggling financial coach, you're trying to get to the next level, okay? Let's work together. I got a program working with coaches, helping them become financial coaches, consultants, strategists without any certifications. You don't need the certifications, okay? Save your money, save the thousands, put it in education, learning actual strategies, doing sixth grade math like this, presenting it to the client, empowering them. Let's have fun. Let's get around like-minded people. We don't have to hate. We don't have to be a community that hates. We don't have to be a community that's, you know, uh, uh, demonizes or polarizes, right? Different groups. What for? Collaborate, right? I like to compete, but I'm going to win in competition and collaboration. You know what they say, collaboration over competition. I like both. I don't mind both, right? I'm cool with it. Collaboration is really nice, right? Find your tribe, find your people. Let's have some fun. Hope this was very valuable for those who are wanting to become financial coaches. I have a link below if you want to join my program. Limited seating, living in space because I'm very, very tight. This isn't something that I'm like um, an expert in and coaching other coaches or training other trainers. So full transparency and honesty there. You're getting me raw. You're, you're, you're analyzing the last four years what I've done as a 26-year-old working with people double my age, people that make more money than me, right, often. People make less money or equal to me and how I'm helping them become better versions of themselves as it relates to finances and actually to the point where I'm the student. I've got clients that do velocity banking better than me. They, they don't admit it. They don't say it. They have mastered the master. I love that. And now I get to be a student where I rightly belong. I'm 26. I should be learning from you. The 40, the 50s, the 60 years. I should be learning from you guys not the other way around. I should be modeling you. And so I'm just gifted in this one area. Boom, you now have the gift. You then teach me how to be better at my craft. We have some fun, right? You can't go wrong. There's so much abundance. Let's stop being, let's stop limiting our clients' belief systems and the, the strategies that they bring to the table and the philosophies and the questions that they have. Work with them, empower them show them mathematically whether it makes sense or not it may not make sense to you as a coach it makes sense to the client at least give them the best strategy to move forward with it and if they make a mistake they come back to you right they say i should have listened to you denzel and that's where you can give your little silent tap on the shoulder for yourself you don't say anything on the phone you say okay you're ready to come back let's you know let's okay let's do some foundation got it that real estate investment didn't work out cool let's go back to foundations okay gotcha boom Get to the next level. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.